Well, I just picked up this battery tender brand, 800 milliamp battery charger and maintainer. I got this for my Moto Guzzi. So let's see what's in the box. Now here's some clamps if you want to clamp your battery tender onto your posts. I'm not going to be using those. Those might be handy for the future. And I have the maintainer, the charger maintainer, and a set of leads to hook to the battery. Now this set of leads, and get the twist tie off. I have a set of leads that'll connect to the battery terminals. I have a fuse. It's a 7.5 amp fuse. And I have an SAE connector. But I'm going to use this. And I'm going to use, obviously, going to use the charger and maintainer. Now, the charger maintainer I got, you can select between lead acid and lithium ion. Now the battery that's in the motorcycle now is lead acid, but when this battery eventually dies, I mean there is a possibility I might put a, a lithium ion battery in it, I don't know. So I bought this, which gives me the option, versus just lead acid. Well the first thing I'm going to do is remove the seat. And the battery's here behind this side cover, but now I have access to the frame up here if I want to tie the cables to it. So now that I have the seat out of the way, I'll move to the other side of the bike. The next step is to remove the side cover. And to remove the cover, all you need is a four millimeter Allen wrench or hex wrench, whatever you like to call it. All right, take that loose. Now in the back, push up on the back of the cover and then push forward on the front and the cover comes off. Oh, there's my screw. You can see in the back, there's a pin that pushes down, and in the front, there's a pin that pushes backwards. So go down, it goes forward. To reinstall, you would go forward and then down. So I'll set this aside, and we'll take a look at what we got here for battery cables. What I've decided to do for routing the cable is I'm going to take this end that'll connect to the charger slash maintainer and I'm going to run it here behind the positive battery cable. So it'll run in like back like this and then back in behind the cable. Then I'm going to tie wrap the top end right here. And so what that'll let me do is this will be back here and out of sight but if I want to, you know, plug it in, I know where it is. I can just reach back here and pull it out. And then otherwise, when I don't need it, I'll just tuck it back in behind there and just try to keep it out of sight. Now, it is a little bit long. So what I'll do is I'll probably fold it over here and then run the cables. But what I'm going to do first is I'll put my tie wrap here, connect the leads, and then I'll arrange it and tie it up so it's neat.
but uh, get the ends set and then I can deal with the extra length. So I'm going to grab a tie wrap, grab a wrench, and I'll hook this thing up. All right, so I have my length set here. I have the end tucked in behind. Let me straighten this out a little bit. Over time, it'll straighten itself out. But just kind of want to figure out where I'm at. I'm tucked in behind the battery cable here. All right. So I'm going to put my tie wrap. here right. and I'll rotate this back so the it's out of sight I just got a nice little Clean little tie wrap there. Okay. All right, so that's secured. And now when I want to hook it up to the charger, all I have to do is reach back here and I know where it is. And when I don't need it, I just tuck it in behind there. I have a 10 millimeter wrench. Now I talked to Manic Moto, who's the Moto Guzzi dealer I bought the bike from, and I asked him about disconnecting the battery, if there was anything in volatile memory that's going to make that an issue, disconnecting the battery, losing power to the system, Am I going to lose anything that's crucial to operating the motorcycle? And they said no. So everything's stored in the ECU or some type of firmware. You probably have to reset the clock, but it's okay to go ahead and disconnect the battery. So I'm going to do that now. And be careful not to touch anything when I'm disconnecting the positive terminal here. I don't want to throw any sparks. And you know with electronics, electronics are sensitive and you just don't need to be <laughs> don't need to be shorting out the positive terminal. There we go. Alright. So that's done. Let me get this out of the way. I don't want that coming back and making contact with the post. Get the negative side off. So now, take my cable. I have my negative side here. So I'll just turn this back. Get that started again. The negative wire connected. It'll be a little more difficult with the positive since I got this cover. And again, I want to, you know, make sure I'm careful that I don't short anything. And I want to have access to the fuse, even though I mean I shouldn't need it. But
Now in the summertime, I'm not going to ride this bike. It's just too hot. And during those months, you know, the, the ECU in the bike does pull a little bit of current. And if the bike sits for long periods of time, well, the battery can go dead. So, during those periods, I'll have the motorcycle connected to the battery maintainer. Let's see how that fits. It's not the best. Let's see if I can do something with like that. Rotate it back just a little bit. That's better. Okay, so that's all in place. You know, try to make it tidy. Okay. So I'm hooked back up. There. So let's see. Turn it on. Everything sounds like it's working. I did lose my clock, which I expected I would. That's all right. No problem. All right. So now put the cover back on. Fingerprints off of there. First thing is insert the front in. Push down on the back. Insert the machine screw. Take that out. All right. So that's done. If I want to get to my cable and plug it in, I just reach back here, pull it out, but I'm done, I just tuck it back in there, and although it's not invisible, it's not completely obvious. Before connecting the charger and maintainer to the bike battery, I want to make sure it's set to lead acid. Plug it in. And there you can select lithium ion, lead acid. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. The battery charger and maintainer has about an 8 foot lead connected to the charger. And that's just not long enough. If I want to put the bike in the middle of the garage bay, it's going to be well short. So I bought this 12 foot extension cable. And I'm going to go ahead and plug that in now. And then we'll hook it up to the bike. Now to connect the extension cable to the charger, you can only connect them one way. And so that's connected. And now I'll connect the other end to the battery. All right, now the end of the cable has a plug that protects the end, so you're not going to short it out on anything and it's not going to get dirty, which is good. I reach in here and pull out the cable. Same thing, it's got a connector on it and a, and a cover, which is good. Now this thing's, this is hot now, so you got to be a little bit careful. But the positive the positive side of the cable is covered, so you're in good shape. The positive's covered, the negative's exposed, 
The negative's no issue. You don't have any electrical problem that way. So as long as you don't get anything stuck up in there and short it to something, you're good to go. Now it's just the opposite with your, with your cable from your charger. The positive post is exposed. I have the charger unplugged from the wall. So before you hook it up, have your charger unplugged. Connect it up. Now we'll go plug it in. All right, we're connected to the bike battery. And now we're going to plug in the charger. And you can see it's doing its thing. Now the way I understand these work, and this might not be exactly correct, but what the maintainer will do is it'll charge the battery to about 14.5 volts. Once it reaches 14.5 volts, then it'll cut off the charge. And it'll allow the battery voltage to drop to about 12.5 volts. And then at 12.5 volts, it'll start charging again and bring the battery level up to 14 and a half volts again. At 14 and a half volts, it cuts off and lets it discharge down to 12 and a half, charge up to 14 and a half, down to 12 and a half. Because with the ECU hooked up and any other accessories hooked up to the battery, there's going to be a drain on the battery. So unless you disconnect the battery in your bike, there's going to be a little bit of a current draw. And over time, if you don't have a maintainer, it'll drain your battery. And since my bike's going to sit for four months at a time during the summer, this will ensure me that I'm going to have good battery life and then you know, get as much life as I can out of my battery. And when I go to start the bike in the fall, that it's a fully charged battery and I'm not, not going to have any issues. For tools, you need a 4 millimeter X wrench and you need a 10 millimeter combination wrench. And if you choose to use a tie wrap, well, then you need a tie wrap. But you need a 4 millimeter hex wrench to remove the side cover, get access to the battery, and a 10 millimeter combination wrench to remove the cables from the battery terminals. So, like always, thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, I got a few more accessories to add to the bike. And I hope you come back and join me next time. Thanks again.